Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the thrilling finale, the epic conclusion of our redesigning the Kanto starter Pokemon series. In the past two episodes, we went ahead and gave every stage an overhaul, starting from the base evolutions all the way up to the middle evolutions. Today, we're finally going to be finishing up and redesigning the final evolutions for the Kanto starters. After having decked out some blood, sweat, and tears, I think I can say that yeah, I'm pretty satisfied. I hit a lot of roadblocks, made a lot of compromises, pissed a little bit of blood, but I think I can say I'm pretty happy with how these ended up. Like I said before, I'm not a fan of these cuddly, wuddly new designs. Game Freak has been coming up with. I want some tussle. I want some grit in my design. So that's the route we ended up going with here. Hopefully you guys dig the final designs. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Let me show you guys our first final evolution. So before I talked about how I thought the Squirtle line was going to give me the most trouble, but after hashing out the designs, it was actually the Bulbasaur line that had me by the balls. This was the design that was really walking the line because every iteration of this evolution was just like disgusting Swamp Frog Monster vibes. I actually had to reel it in a little bit because I had accidentally just gone and created like some new D&D creature instead of a Pokemon. If you ain't vibing with this design, then rest assured that the rest do get more progressively Pokemon-like. So with Venusaur, I had a few goals I needed to hit. I wanted to finally go 100% with the frog concept we started tadpole with bulbasaur froglet with ivysaur and finally full-on frog mode with like venusaur so let me fill you in on the design let me show you what we're working with under the hood here so i had two main inspirations for this guy i wanted a full-on swamp creature i wanted you to look at this thing and be like yeah this thing lives in the mud and you know it'll swallow me whole if it sees me the second big inspiration were the frogs from naruto those big old ninja frogs they just had they had just what i needed to push venusaur from just some npc swamp creature to like an actual pokemon with personality i want this thing to just sit there in the mud waiting you know hunting i realized at this point that we really really need we needed that venusaur plant bulb thing to really sell the design so i did a little bit of research i was looking for poisonous plants to base it off of the original venusaur plant is already based off of a real plant so i didn't just want to reuse it and then every single venusaur redesign it, they just give it the venus flytrap plant like we've seen that a million times we got to keep it fresh you feel me you need something new that's when i came across this plant angel's trumpet this is a plant that according to martha stewart is toxic and hallucinogenic I like the colors that it came in, the name, the, just the overall design, so I decided to base our plan off of it. Just like Ivysaur, I wanted this final evolution to have some real mass, some like real heft to it. I wanted you to really imagine this thing like parading and hopping around the swamp. I added in some more of those poisonous bulbs around its body and even gave it like that throat sack ribbit thing. I really like how the tongue came out too, that's what really ties it together I think. So yeah, I understand this is like a really big deviation from the original Venusaur, so I'm anxious and like excited to hear what you guys think about it. Let me know what you think, you know? Okay. Okay, let's move on to their Pokédex entry. Venusaur, the Swamp Frog Pokémon. It resides in the darkest, murkiest depths of swamps and marshes. It enjoys burying itself in the muddy banks of rivers until only the plant on its back is showing. Despite its massive mass, it is incredibly agile and quick to move. It is capable of launching itself high into the air with its powerful legs. Venusaur use their long and muscular tongue to capture any prey. The tongue is covered in a powerful poison and sticky saliva that traps anything that it catches. There are folk tales of trainers who wander too deep into the swamps, being swallowed whole and never being seen again. Venusaur has the ability GUI. Its large body is constantly covered in a sticky and poisonous film. Any contact with it will reduce a Pokemon's speed significantly. Venusaur also has the hidden ability, Hustle. When it leaping through the trees it receives a significant boost to its attack stat but the speed at which it moves makes it lose accuracy. Man, oh man. <laughs> Charizard was the one that really had me stressed out to be honest. When I first started the redesign series, I had a decent idea of what I wanted to do with the Charmander line. Deciding to go with like a wingless Drake Tiger Cave Dweller type of deal instead of a winged dragon everybody knows. So here's the thing, it worked. Like it came out pretty much how I envisioned it and that's what has me like worried. You know, will it be enough? Like I know it's obviously not enough to topple the OG Char Charizard, but is this design enough for it to like stand on its own? Looking at it, I think it's like a perfect middle ground between what I would consider my style and the Pokemon style, maybe just in terms of like design philosophy. I also wanted to design something that felt like an animal, but also like a Pokemon. For this one, I at least got the anatomy exactly how I wanted it to come out. Uh, I wanted this like top heavy predator that really gave off like these big cat dragon vibes. So going over the design, we have what I think is pretty justifiable leap and evolution coming over from Charmeleon. I grew out some of the horns on its face to give it something of like a matador look, like a bull. Uh, I made sure to draw in those like top heavy shoulders, those muscular arms. Uh, 
sturdy tail. I added some scars across the body for a little bit of flavor, you know. This is a Pokemon that's really got to fight to survive, you know. When when I was messing around with the sketches, I ended up giving up giving it like this gaping hole on the side, which was just like leaking magma. I thought it looked kind of cool since Charmeleon's whole deal was that it was like starving, and now Charizard has like this literal hole in its stomach. I kind of dig it, but I know there's someone in like the, the last video that wasn't vibing with the whole starving aspect of the design. Looking at it, all in all, I think we got a success to be honest. I did what I set out to do here. I wanted to design a Charizard that wasn't just like a winged dragon, and I'm pretty happy with the result. This looks like some alternative universe Charizard, you know? Instead of a Western dragon, we went with a Drake. I can see how people might not like it since when holding it up in comparison with the OG Charizard, it might seem a little lacking because of the wings. Like, you look at it and you're just like, uh, something's missing here, you know? But like, I'm excited to hear what you guys think about this one though. Let me know. Let's move on to its Pokedex entry. Charizard, the magma Pokemon. Charizard live only in the deepest depths of volcanic caves. They spend their time constantly hunting for their next meal which in the deeper levels only consists of Mag Cargo, Magmar and other Charmeleon. Charizard are extremely territorial and will often have violent spats over hunting grounds. When low on energy, they are fond of taking long naps inside pools of bubbling magma. Charizard used to be a popular choice for trainers in search of powerful Pokemon. The Pokemon Ranger Association, however, has restricted access to known Charizard habitats. This is due to the high fatality rate surrounding unprepared trainers. Charizard have the ability Intimidate. Any Pokemon encountering a Charizard will be overtaken by fear and have their attack stat significantly reduced. Charizard also has the hidden ability Guts. Hardened by their perilous living conditions, should this Pokemon ever suffer a status affliction it will enter survival mode and receive a significant boost to their attack stat. Throughout these videos, the Squirtle line was the one I was the most excited to show you guys. So the big breakthrough I had when working on this line was the theme. What holds it together, you know? The other two starters don't really have a theme, which is something that like old Pokemon did a lot. They were just kind of a thing, like seal. It's it's just a seal, you know? But then you got new Pokemon, especially like the Kalos starters that are just like RPG class theme, you know? For us, Venusaur and Charizard are just kind of like singular Pokemon based on theme, you know? It's just like frog and like dragon. I don't know if I'm, if I'm really making sense here, but for Squirtle, we had a theme, the beach. So Squirtle was our little sea turtle guy, you know, our little tyke making their little sand castles, playing and dancing with the tourists. And then War Turtle was our teenager, you know, a little bit more competitive, more like sports oriented, like competition, races, battles, you feel me? So with Blastoise as our adult, I was like, what the hell can I do? I knew we weren't going to be using the water cannons. And once you take those off of Blastoise, he's just kind of like a big turtle, you know? So now if you know me, you know, there's nothing I like more than some beefy, muscular men, you know? So what do you mean by that? Maybe a little bit of Braum for <laughs> League of Legends when it hit me. There's a bunch of muscular ass beefy men that hang out on a beach. Venice Beach. For those that don't live on the West Coast, you know, California, or haven't played a little bit of GTA 5, Venice Beach has like this whole gym set up where these dudes just hang out and like they pump iron all day, dude. That's when I decided on the inspiration for Blastoise bodybuilders one thing i always liked about the og blastoise was its attitude it's like this this thing is a pimp you know you just look at it and it just oozes out like arrogance like a smug aura blastoise looks like it has like a buzz cut and he's a cracker barrel like this dude drives a ford f-150 you know I, wa I wanted to make the personality play into the bodybuilder theme this blastoise is big you know it's heavy it's all muscle one of my biggest concerns when making squirtle were the sea turtle arms i was desperate to switch up the design any way i could and i knew the new arms could work on squirtle i didn't know i was gonna make them i didn't know how I was gonna make them not look like dweebish on Blastoise. Like you can't have this like roided out fucking monster and then give it like these shrimpy little flat arms. So I took a risk and made the arms as muscular as I could. Hopefully they don't look goofy. I don't know. I kind of like them. They're kind. They kind of reminded me of Mega Swampert's arms and like those really grew on me when even though I thought they looked silly at first. I decided to keep the fluff around from War Turtle since it was one of my favorite aspects of the designs. I wanted the fluff to kind of work like a mask, almost like a luchador kind of vibe. For the inner shell, I didn't just want to make it too complicated, but I also didn't want it to look something too flat i tried to work almost like an anchor design into the shell i don't know if you can really see it that well after all said and done but yeah i really like the design originally i wanted the final pose to be one of those like bodybuilder poses where they're like flexing and stuff but i couldn't make blastoise not look goofy as hell in those poses you know like it's it would look too it looks too silly so i like so i scrapped it i liked how the mass of blastoise came out in the end like i look at this thing and i feel like it's heavy you know like it's heavy as hell this dude is beefy like so <laughs> i'm excited to hear what you guys have to say about the design let me know what you like or what you didn't like so let's move on to their pokedex entry blastoise the bodybuilding pokemon blastoise enjoy making their homes by coral reefs along the shores of popular tropical beaches the most adjusted of the three starters 
This Pokemon loves being the center of attention and will take any opportunity to flex its gigantic flippers. Despite its massive frame and enormous strength, Blastoise are incredibly friendly and sociable. It is a common sight to see hordes of children and Squirtle hanging off the arms of Blastoise. Nothing is said to be able to pierce its shell or even its tough skin. Its gigantic flippers are capable of easily crushing boulders and punching through steel. Even with its massive size and weight, Blastoise is still reportedly one of the fastest Pokemon on water capable of reaching speeds of 80 miles per hour when it has a running start. Blastoise has the ability, Strong Jaw. Along with its muscular flippers, it also has a powerful jaw with a snapping force of over 4000 psi. When hunting, Blastoise have been known to bite through cloister-like butter. Strong Jaw increases the power of all biting moves by 50%. Blastoise has the hidden ability, Huge Power. After spending countless hours training and building its body Blastoise has tapped into a new realm of strength. Huge Power automatically doubles the attack stat of Blastoise allowing for it to unleash its true potential. Well, that's it. We finished our first set of redesigns. We, you know, we can mark Kanto off the long list of regions we have left to do. How, how'd I do? What do you guys think? Uh, I'm excited to hear what you guys think. I'm honestly pretty happy with how it turned out. I went into this thinking it would be like great practice, and it was. I learned a lot. I think I improved a little bit. I got out of my comfort zone when designing Pokemon, tried out some new anatomy, some new shapes and sizes. Uh, I hope you guys liked the designs. Let me know what you guys thought. That's pretty much it. Stay tuned next time for when we take a crack at Generation 2 and redesign the Johto starters. Thanks for watching.